Hi there, I'm Lauren with Bold Notion Quilting and on my website boldnotionquilting.com I've just started selling these full line stencils as well as some other stencils and the pounce pads and chalk and I wanted to give you guys an idea on a how to just get ready and get started with those pounce pads because you have to fill them with the chalk and it can be a little daunting and b just some tips and tricks for how to make the chalk adhere best to your fabric so that Either if you're sit down, well, especially if you're sit down quilter, um, those chalks don't rub off before you finish quilting your quilt. Um, and then just some tips for how to make it more crisp and clean if you're applying it if you're a long arm quilter. So first things first, I've got myself some black practice fabric here, and I want to show you a regular stencil. I'm all about information, so there might be some people who are very new to this. Um, and some people that are very versed in it, just bear with me. I want to make sure to cover all the basics. So regular stencils are generally plastic. They have, um, they're usually laser cut and they have slits down them and you can clearly see where the holes are that the chalk is going to fall through. When you're doing something called with using the full line stencil, um, that's the name of the company. They're the ones um, who developed this. They are actually like a fabric. Can you hear it? It's got like a mesh and the blue is everywhere that the chalk won't go and then the white is where the chalk um, can actually fall through. And so if you have some stencils at home and they're lying around in a bin somewhere and you haven't opened them up or taken them out, take them out now, take a look at them. Um, if for some reason your plastic stencils are bent or wrinkled and it's hard for you to be able to um, adhere the chalk to your quilt, um, you'll want to try to press and flatten those back out. The, only, the best way that I can think of would be if you use some heavy books or some heavy weights and some flat boards to push on the opposite side of the wrinkle that's in your um, that's in your plastic stencil. So if the wrinkle is bent up like this, you want to push on it to push it out like that. I would not recommend using an iron or anything for a regular plastic stencil because you will probably melt it. For the full line stencils, however, the fabric that they're made out of, um, it doesn't hold its, it doesn't hold uh, like crinkles in it very well. It doesn't have much of a memory. That's the word I was looking for. And so if for some reason it does get wrinkled, what you can do is take a warm iron to it without any water, so warm iron, no steam, and you can actually press right over it to make that wrinkle go away. So I don't know if you can tell from there, but I've got a nice little wrinkle in mine because the plastic that it was stored in has a nice wrinkle and that's just how it sits all the time. So next you have a stencil of some kind and you want to adhere it onto your fabric. You can do a lot of different things with the stencils. You can use a little chalk rolly things if you want, but I recommend using a quilt pounce pad. So um, it's actually, yeah, quilt pounce. So this one I have full of white chalk and I've got, it's kind of like a microfiber type cloth and then you fill this little area with the chalk and then you've got a cover for it. I recommend always keeping it covered, maybe having a rubber band too because that chalk can kind of come out of there. So when you first get your quilt pounce pad, you have to fill it. Now they give you a crazy amount of chalk in these kits and it actually is enough to fill your pounce pad about four times. So you're getting a really good bang for your buck there. And the kits come with a plastic container. You've got the microfiber, this one has never been filled. And then they often come color coded. So if it's the blue chalk, it has a blue plastic ring. How fun of them to think of that. And then if it's the white ultimate powder, it's got a clear ring. So you just pull this off. Now um, it's basically got some like styrofoam and a mesh in there to allow the chalk to come through to the bottom. I will say that when I have filled this up um, with my white one it was kind of difficult. I had a spoon and all kinds of crazy stuff just trying to make it work. So I often will just pour a little bit in there. Try not to spill it because chalk gets everywhere. And then you just kind of work it down into a corner. OK, 
Okay, and I'm probably about three quarters of the way full. So I will just fill this until my hole is full of chalk now that I've worked it into two sides. And that'll be enough for this demonstration. And I will just kind of shake it down in there. And I filled it to where the chalk was full in the hole. And you can see now that it has settled in there quite nicely. Okay. And then all I'm going to do is plug it. And that plug is deep. So make sure that the chalk um, doesn't go up past, um, past the rim because that, that plug's going to go deep in there. So you don't want it to be smashed in there. So next, once you fill your pounce pad, this should be blue. So you're going to have to take your pounce pad and you're going to have to prime it. This reminds me of when I would get in trouble in elementary school and my teacher would make me take the chalk, the chalk pads and hit them together. Okay, let's see. All right. So see, we've got the blue powder starting to come through and you can see it here in the container that it's come through. So that's probably not enough yet to go ahead and, and uh, be primed enough to work on my quilt top. So I'll just do it a little bit more until the rest of it gets full. So I'm gonna do my demonstration with the white so you don't have to sit here, watch me pound that. So if for some reason you're having a hard time getting it in there, I recommend getting a little tiny funnel. I bet you have them in your, um, in your kitchens. And then the funnel sometimes can get clogged so a chopstick can help you to push that chalk through. All right, so some tips for applying the chalk. use the clean side. So we've got our stencil, okay? And you can tell with the stencils um, how they're supposed to line up and go together. You can usually do it one of two ways. They have got these registration marks and you line those up to make the patterns continue. So if I go ahead and put this down, and I don't know if there's a right side or a wrong side, but oftentimes when I'm looking at it to put my stencil down, I'll make sure that I can read the words because it says fulllinestencil.com 2017. Um, so I'll know that that's right. So I'll line it up with the edge of my quilt. And if I were quilting this for real, you'd want to keep it about a quarter of an inch away from the edge so you don't bind over that and lose the design or put it right up to the design that's up to you. So this is nice and primed. There's white all over it and it's good for like four inches of swipe. So let me make sure that you can see this. So it's called pounce pad, but you don't actually pounce it down the whole time. That will make the biggest mess. So what you want to do is just press and swipe. Oh no, I moved it. That looks about right. Press and swipe. Press and swipe. And if you don't keep moving it like I am, press and swipe. Okay. When you lift it up, haha, -ha, that didn't do too bad. You should have the design on there. Now, if you want to continue the design, you want to make sure to get these little crosshairs on there. So you can see a crosshair here and here. And I got one in the third corner, but not in the fourth corner. So we're just going to try to play it safe. What I do is I line this crosshair over the other crosshair. And then I also just verify that like my points are lining up with my points. And this gives you like an all over pantograph type quilting design. So I put it down, swipe, swipe, swipe. I think I'm getting a little crooked here. Make sure to start off nice and square with your quilt top. Okay? And that continues the design. So this was my end of my first design and then I continued it over. So this is something that I could theoretically do all over an entire quilt and have this be my quilting design in the background, which is nice. So you want to prime your quilt top before you go to the machine. Whether you're a sit-down quilter or a long armor, that's my recommendation. Um, when you do your pounce on a flat, hard surface, you get better adherence to the actual fabric. If you do it on a long arm machine, it's holding 
stretchy fabric, you know, between the two bars. So when you pounce, it kind of swoops down and then you get kind of blurry and muffled lines. So I'm putting this fabric on before I take my quilt to the machine. How is the chalk going to stay on? Because chalk can easily be wiped off. So some tips that we have for that, and I don't have much left, so I hope this lasts just a little bit that I need, is to just get some aerosol hairspray. Get the cheap stuff like the Suave or the Aquanet. Um, and you just do a light mist. Once you're done putting it over your whole area, and let it dry, so wait a minute or two, and then take it over to your frame to work with. And that's going to prevent the chalk from coming off before you get to the, um, to the actual machine. And then I'll show you how, even if you swipe it down, okay, we'll let this dry for a second. How easy it is to still remove the chalk then with the uh, chalk removal brush. Now this is basically a, um, a lint brush, like a pet hair lint brush. So one way it's really smooth, okay? I guess I should say two ways. So if you go one direction it's really smooth and you can do that to remove any lint that might already be on it if you've used it for your quilt tops. And then the other way, you can hear it. it's rough and that rough side is what's going to take the chalk off. So my hairspray is dry. I rub it with my fingers and I can still see the faint lines. Okay. But I want to show you that it will still remove with the lint roller once you're done. Not to mention you can wash this chalk. It'll go away. You can iron the chalk for the white and it will go away. So white you can brush off, wash off, or iron and it will disappear, which is awesome. No steam on the iron. And then for the blue, because it has a pigment in it, you cannot use the iron to make it go away. But blue is great for like white or light colored um, quilt tops uh, so that you can see it because you can't always see the white pounce chalk on the white fabrics. And you can brush that or wash it away. So don't introduce it to any heat. Alrighty, so I've moved and I've basted down the quilt top onto my long arm machine because I normally float my top, so I uh, have it free hanging on the bottom and it's basted all the way around. And I want to show you some tips for applying this successfully on your long arm. So when you're quilting, right, you've got these flappy pieces of fabric on your bars. You don't want it too tight because it'll cause tension issues. And so if you took the pounce pad and you pressed it on um, your long arm machine, what would happen is this fabric would bend down as you do that and then the chalk would settle in these grooves um, fat and not precise like you see here. So I'm going to go ahead and line this sucker up right here. So a tip for making this work best with your long arm machine is having your ruler base underneath so you have a nice flat surface to press on firmly and it's still a little bit more ooh, padded than it would have been uh, at the table because we now have batting on our quilt. So if I remove that you can see how it shifts just a little bit and I got a little bit of a double zigzag going on there. Just a little bit wider. So I use my plastic ruler base to help me um, keep it nice and flat and put a nice line on there. So next I've got my ruler base on largely because um, I have a straight design and I want to utilize my ruler. So I'm going to use my ruler to do this design because for me I'm a little OCD and I would prefer my lines to be as perfect as possible. Heck, that's why I'm using the pounce pad, right? And that ruler can wipe off some of your chalk, so I hope you sprayed it down. We're just going to follow some of those lines. Now, I want to show you something. There's always multiple ways to follow a path. So I could follow this every zigzag back and forth every single time. Or, I could follow this down. And you 
you see how when I'm quilting, you can see like puffs of powder coming up. That's the chalk coming off. But I promise you it stays on plenty long enough for you to quilt. And I'll just quilt a section of it here so you get the idea. I'm sure you don't want to watch me quilt the whole thing. Okay, and then we'll do another one. And this is just another example, actually, of how you can use stencils. I feel like stencils, sometimes you think they're a one-trick wonder. That's the only way I can use that stencil. Um, that's how I used to think before I got a little more creative with my quilting and I felt more comfortable. So you could just do these straight zigzag lines um, through and it looks like a red lightning bolt. Can you see what I've stitched? It's just these two red lines back and forth. You don't have to do the kind of modern cross hatch that's happening here, but we'll keep going. And the idea would be that if you had this across a whole quilt and it continued all the way down here, you would just reach what you could reach in your throat space. If you're a sit down quilter, you can do multiple portions of it in one fell swoop. And you can work all ends of that quilt top as long as you basted it well. So you can see I'm moving my ruler all around it. If you were sit down quilting, your, the fabric on your clothes could be brushing up against it. The, um, your cabinetry could be brushing up against it. There's a lot that could be happening that could be impacting how well this chalk adheres. So best tip is just to do it on a nice flat, even surface. It helps the chalk to settle. Spray it a little bit with some hairspray. And then I'll show you how it brushes off as soon as I get this section quilted. And then I'll show you a fun trick we can do with these. I love any kind of stencil that can help me get a neat motif that otherwise would be hard to mark. Can't have too many good stencils. Right now, from where I'm at, you can barely see the white underneath the red. And you just want to grab your stencil brush. You can make this particular pounce powder go away with an iron. You can wash it. Uh-oh. I'm pulling my batting onto there now. That's not pretty. Or you can use a stencil brush. And I will say that the stencil brush works best on a flat surface. So now that I'm on my actual um, long arming ruler table, that chalk powder is going away a lot better than on the looser parts. So it's just a matter of being able to kind of get into those little grooves that you've just quilted. Okay, so now what you can see is, um, you can see kind of where I've stitched with the red, but this is the chalk powder that we put on at the table where it was nice and flat. And this is a chalk powder that we put on on the long arm. So this has hairspray on it. This does not. And I want to show you. If you take the lint brush, you just rub in one direction. Okay, it comes off pretty well without having to distort 
your quilt top in any way. For the most part, you will have stitched on the line, so you actually won't see most of those lines. Once you toss it into the um, washer and then the dryer, the stuff is gone for good. So those are my tips for using your chalk pounce pads. Just remember to keep them in a warm, dry environment. Store them upside down so the cap is on the bottom and the chalk doesn't oversaturate the top, especially with the colored chalks. You don't want to have too much getting on your quilt tops. Um, when you adhere them, do them on a nice flat surface. Uh, do a little hairspray if you're going to be doing a lot of quilting um, or if you'll be using rulers on top of it because the ruler and the hopper foot will brush some of that uh, chalk away. And then of course if you're sitting down and you're wrestling with a quilt and it's going to be rubbing against your clothes and the cabinet and everything, um, you want to make sure to prevent all that hard work that you've put putting the stencil on from coming off of your quilt top. So that hairspray can really help you. I was just using like a Tresemme Ultimate Hold but that's just because I have curly hair, so <laughs> I need stronghold. But um, if I were just if I just had one in my studio, I'd probably get the Suave um, or like Aquanet or something that's super cheap from uh, from the dollar store. You also want to make sure that you have some kind of lint brush remover. I personally like this one. I can switch it around if I need to, which is pretty sweet, um, and it's pretty. Um, soft and non-abrasive. Before I was using a microfiber cloth and I was scrubbing my quilt top a lot to the point to where you could see the fiber starting to kind of pill up. Um, so I didn't like that, but having this brush is nice because you really can't put too much pressure on your quilt top. And then of course you want to set yourself up for success. If your rulers have any dents or, or your stencils have any dents or dings in them, you want to make sure to either iron them out if they're a full line stencil or flatten them out with some heavy books um, in a warm area uh, to get the plastic kinks out. So I'm Lauren with Bold Notion Quilting. Thank you for joining me. If you're curious about um, any of these full line stencils or would like to get some for yourself or the chalk pounce kits, I sell them on boldnotionquilting.com. There's a link below. Um, if this is a YouTube video, there's a link above if I have shared this YouTube video to my Facebook. Thank you very much for joining me today and happy quilting.